Well, happy birthday, Ray. Yeah. It was a great production. If I'd have had a Kleenex, I'd have cried, but <laughs> I didn't, and I didn't want to get my shirt all wet. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, uh, I, I talked to Richard earlier this week, and he said uh, I prayed for him uh, with about his back, and I know the Lord was doing a work in that, and uh, he uh, came up uh, there one day, and he said, uh, what can I pray for you? I said, well, pray about uh, my sermon coming up. I said, uh, so he, he did. And uh, so finally, last night, you know, uh, Ray told me this four weeks ago. So last night, why, finally, uh, things kind of started coming together because uh, I just didn't know where I was going with this. I'm not sure that I really know where I'm going with it today, but we'll find out real quick. All right, let's just pray. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for this. It's just been a marvelous day. It's a beautiful day out, Father God. And I thank you, Father, that we can celebrate as a family. We can celebrate so many things. Celebrating Pastor Ray's uh, 60th birthday. And uh, uh, that's just great. Uh, this production... Uh, with, with uh, messages from all the kids, the grandkids. That's just a wonderful thing, and, and I know it touched his heart, touched uh, all the rest of our hearts, too. We thank you, Lord, uh, also uh, for Steve and Karen as, as they go on the mission trip, Father God. We're excited about what you're going to do. You've used them so many times, Father God, in other areas uh, where they, they were willing to submit and go and do what you wanted them to do. And we thank you, Lord, that you're just going to bless them. We thank you that they're just amazing people, Father God. We have so many amazing people, God. You have blessed this body. And we just give you praise for each and every one, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you are not unique, that you are not special. You are. God has placed you at this time in history. I've heard people say, oh, I should have been born back when the uh, Wild West was going on. Yeah, you wanted to go and, and miss out because there wasn't any 7-Elevens. You had to go out and find fuel, go out and kill game. You had to do without water. Yeah, you should have been born in when the Wild Wild West was going on. Hallelujah. God puts you here at a specific time in a specific place, and you are truly blessed, and you are a special person to the body. You complement one another. Hallelujah. That's not my sermon. All right. Uh, so anyway, here a while back, I, I talked about uh, one of the sermons I talked about. I used to hate titles. Uh, I'm still not real key on them, but sometimes they give you a little insight on where you're going with them. Uh, I talked about the overflow, the overflow that God had from the found, before the foundations of the world and all the things and plans that he had made so that he could bring, have fellowship with mankind. Then I, I had another sermon here a short time ago. It was on breakthrough, breaking through depending upon us getting through all of the circumstances and situations in life and and coming out on the other side and trusting God in the middle of it so uh, I've got a I've got a new title tonight or tonight well it may be a long time all right we have a few hours to go uh, but we're going I want to talk about living from victory living from victory I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm believing God for victory. I'm sorry. That is not what the Word says. The Word says that you are victorious, that you are already have victory. You're walking in victory because Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit. You are moving on. So, hallelujah, quit living to, uh, uh, like you're going to victory. You are in victory and act like it. You know, uh, there's just a lot of things that happen in our life, and and we wonder, we wonder, well, things are just not going to go right. I know I've told this story before. That's all right. You're going to get to hear it again. My son was uh, 29 years old. He lived at home. I was beginning to wonder if he'd ever leave home. 
I mean, he'd been to college, he'd been to the service, and then he moved back, and he stayed, and he stayed, <laughs> and he stayed. And so one day, a friend of his called him and said, Say, he said, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to enroll at Carbondale. I'm going to go to college down there, take some courses. Would you like to go along with me, just ride along? I need somebody to go with me. He said, Sure. So he comes back and he says, well, guess what? I enrolled. I'm going back to school. I'm amazed. And so I'm thinking he's actually leaving home. Uh, so anyway, why he goes, he goes down to college, and uh, he's down there a good while, and, and he's working on campus. And anyway, he comes home, and, and uh, he quit going to church. Uh, he'd got his feelings hurt. Somewhere along the line, somebody had said something, and, and it had upset him. So anyway, why he, uh, he just didn't want to go to church, and he didn't want to talk about God. So anyway, he comes home. Now, I'll tell you what. My children never have any de- in-depth in talks with me, deep. They don't share a lot of their feelings with me. And that's okay, because I love them. They're mine, and they're a blessing to me. But they do talk to their grandmother or their mother, grandchildren the same way. I don't know what it is about me. I, I, I'm lacking some area there, I'll tell you what. But anyway, they'll talk to her. So he's home one day, and she's talking to him about the Lord. And uh, she's talking to him about had he, I mean, he's, he's in his 30s now. And uh, she said, uh, have you met any, any young ladies or anything? No, no, I just never meet anybody and nobody's interested in me. Nobody seems to, to want to be around me like that. And I'm probably just never going to get married. He said, I don't, think, I don't think God cares about me one way or the other. Now, Louise has been praying a lot. And uh, that's not to say that I don't occasionally pray, but I do pray. <laughs> I, know, I know that's hard to believe, but, uh, but she, pray, she prays a lot. And she prays about, about them, and I'm in agreement with her prayers. So anyway... He's, he's decided he's never going to get married. There's no woman out there that seems to be interested in him. And lo and behold, in the midst of this, God has been moving. And moving in a great and mighty way that none of us realize until later on. Now, God's got him down at Carbondale. He's got Louise here praying, and God's saying, okay, now what? I need to answer those prayers. She's praying for him. Now, she's thanking him for this helpmate, for this son. And God says, okay, now let me look and see what the perfect helpmate would be for him. So over in China, in the northern provinces, and this young lady is traveling by train to go to the university uh, in, uh, gosh, can't even think of the name, uh, not Singapore, but to, anyway, in, into interior China. And she's traveling by train. It takes a lot, several hours to get there, and she has studied, and she has done real well. And she has won a scholarship to the United States to study for her doctorate. And, of course, of all places that she's going to go, she's going to go to Carbondale. Strictly by chance, she realized. It's not a God thing. Yeah, it is. So, Donald, in the area, in the place that she is going to work in, and in studying for the doctorate, she had to spend a lot of time in this building that had a huge laboratory. Plus, she was also helping the teacher 
teach classes. She had very little English. And what she did have really stressed us a lot to understand after we finally met her. So anyway, he uh, had a job there on the university. And it just happened again that it was in this lab that he cleaned every night, and she would come in and spend two or three hours extra time in the lab. So he said, I always was nice and spoke to her and, and uh, said she got, so, uh, she got used to me uh, coming through to clean, and we'd talk a little bit. And So anyway, as, as time went on, uh, developed some type of a relationship. Well, one evening, uh, Donald calls, and he says, uh, Dad, I'm coming home Friday evening. I said, well, great. I said, we'll, we'll be glad to see you and, and uh, looking forward to it. Oh, and, and he said, I, I, I'm going to bring a friend with me. I got off the phone. I told Louise, I said, this is a girl. <laughs> he didn't tell me that, but I said, this is a girl he's bringing. And lo and behold, that's who he brings home for the weekend. And uh, she's not saved. Donald's saved, but he doesn't want anything to do with the church. So they go back down. Now, in Carbondale, they have sometimes uh, the different uh, groups, uh, whether they be Chinese or they be a, a, a different group, a different nationality, will get together and because they have things in common, they have language in common and stuff. So she was going to a group that was uh, Chinese, basically oriented. Not, not all of them Chinese, but most of them. And uh, it was a Christian group. And she was taking Donald along with her. Now, she's not a Christian, so anyway, why they're going to that, he enjoys the fellowship, and, and she said, uh, say, she said, after a, a few weeks and, and time goes on, she said, a lot of the people that I associate with go to this church, and they talk about great things, can I, could you take me to that church? Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, hey, uh, Hell, I can take you to church. It's not a problem. I'll do anything to be with you, you know. And uh, I can remember going and sitting in church services up at Hudsonville. Uh, there was this girl I liked. That was the only place I could get to see her. Dad wouldn't let me see her any other time. So I'd go up and I'd sit, and I'd sit back there and I could sit with her in the pew. And, of course, Dad was uh, where he could keep an eye on me, too. I don't think he was thrilled with me. But anyway... Uh, uh, so anyway, he takes her to church, and so uh, she finally says to him one morning, she said, you know, she said, I would really like to go up to the altar and accept the Lord. She said, would you go with me? Naturally, uh, he didn't refuse, and he went, and she accepted the Lord, and he recommitted his life to the Lord. Now, in this, that afternoon, he calls me. He said, Dad, I got something to tell you. He said, we went to church today, and you ping accepted the Lord, and I recommitted my life to the Lord. And what that church did was, immediately after that, they assigned a couple, an older couple, to mentor them that would meet and get together with them. This church had a good program they didn't leave you just sitting out there on the end of the limb. You, you went out there, and, well, you're a Christian. We're glad. See you next Sunday. No. They made arrangements that you would have somebody to speak into your life and encourage you and mentor you. And I know that Donald and Yu Ping had, had the most wonderful times with them. They uh, uh, were so uh, sad when they finally moved because they were going to lose these mentors. So the thing about it is, is that God, in the midst of this, a lot of people have said there's no victory for him. 
He's, he's already made a confession. I, I guess God never wants me to have a wife or a family. Now, my son has two boys. It's amazing what you get when you uh, uh, join two people together. He's got two boys, and uh, I talk to him every once in a while on the phone, and I'll say, what have you been doing? Well, I was out playing this with, with the boys. And he said, I am just wore out. He said, Dad, do you know how old I am? I'm thinking, yeah, I know how old you are. But I said, you better decide that you're going to be young for a long time. <laughs> so, uh, and these boys are, I think, uh, one's uh, seven and the other's nine. Yeah. Nine and seven, so they they have full energy. I know I know when I talk to him on the phone, I can hear screams and hollering and going on in the background, and I can hear thuds and somebody's giving somebody a karate chop or something, <laughs> or a kickboxing, you know. Uh, so anyway, they're they're just full of energy. I, I told Donald, I said, well, I said you need to get over that being tired. He said, but I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 45 years old. I said, that's all right. I said, that's my last two. Or I was that age when they came along, so it's okay. It's all right. But see, God brought the victory, and your prayers avail much. God, God has, has special people to join together. That's just like Donald and his wife. I mean, go to China. Who would have ever figured? That's like when I get uh, emails from uh, Becca. <laughs> I'm just amazed. I mean, here she is in South Korea, and she's teaching, and she's been there a little over two years. I think this is her third year. But it's amazing where God ends up putting you. But God has put special talents in each one of us. Now, the thing about it is, so, so Louise has victory because her prayers are being answered. Donald has victory because he has a wife and he has a family. I have victory because we're past all that, and we can get on to good things. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Now, that wasn't my sermon either. <laughs> anyway, Ray said we had a long day. Uh, but... I, I, one of my favorite chapters in in, uh, in Scripture is uh, Romans 8. I find that Romans 8 has so much in it. In Romans 8, in verse 29, it says, God knew what he was doing from the beginning. I want you to catch a hold of that. He knows what he's doing. That's why my son has a wife. That's why my son has a family. That's why we see the testimony of raised children up here and the grandchildren and the blessings that they are. Each one of our children are a blessing. Hallelujah. God's done mighty and wonderful things, and he continues to do that. So God knows what he's doing, and he knew from the beginning, even before the foundations of the world, how he was going to shape those people who love him. He was going to shape us in the lines or the mold of his son, Jesus Christ. That's who we are in this world today. Jesus said, <laughs> said the, the, the disciples said to him, show us the Father and we'll believe. Show us the Father. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Well, I want to tell you what. If you know Christ, if you're obedient to his words, if you're obedient to the commands he's given you, and somebody says, oh, I just need to see Jesus. Well, then you need to, to do that. You need to be that person that they see because you are the revelation of Jesus in this earth. It says he's going to shape those along, Father God, the same lines as his dear son, Jesus Christ, who was the firstborn of many brethren. So what do you think? Do you think God is well able to do all these things? Do you think that God has given us victory in all things? I believe he has. 
Just remember this. If God is on our side, nobody that can be against us. For God put everything on the line for us. He put us on, on, put it all on the line for us. He gave his all. He put Jesus, his son, went to that cross and died for us to restore us. We thank you, Father God, that you put everything in line for us. We thank you, Father, that you did not spare your own son, but you gave it all for us. There's nothing else that he will not give us. You know, a lot of times we say, well, I know Jesus went to the cross. I know he died. But, boy, things are just not working out for me. Things just don't seem to be going right. God, why did this happen to me? Why is this circumstance in my life? I'm going to tell you, that gift of Jesus Christ, his most precious, the most precious thing to God, he's given that to us. Why would he not freely give us all other things that we have need of in this life? You know, uh, it so says over in John 10.10, 10, it says, it says, a thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy your testimony. He wants to destroy your belief. He wants to destroy everything that he can in your life because he knows that that witness that you have, that belief that you have in Christ, that Christ is on your side, that he'll never leave you, if he can destroy that, he's thrilled. He's thrilled if, if you're a Christian that goes to church every Sunday and leaves the Bible, lay on your coffee table for the rest of the week. He's thrilled with that. He's happy with that. It says, it says that, that, the, that the, the demons even knew that, that, God, that God had power, that he was capable of, of changing things. Even they believe that. But the thing about it is, is that we need those people to step out and to be that witness and testimony. You know, uh, I was thinking uh, about, uh, it says here in Romans uh, 8.33, it says, Know this. No one can bring condemnation. No one can bring condemnation in your life against you. Because Jesus says in John 10:10, 10, 10 also, he says, Jesus came to give life and to give it. And one translation says to the full. Another one says abundantly. Abundantly. That's what he's going to give you, life abundantly. And the thing about it is for God has put us in right relationship with him. He's made us righteous in his sight. All, and what that means is righteousness is just not good living. Righteousness is believing what God has done, believing that we are in right standing with him. He wants us to be aware of that fact that Christ died for us. He was raised to life again. He sits at the, in the presence of God at the right hand. He's actually pleading pleading on our behalf. He takes those prayers and he stands in the gap for us. He's like that lawyer that stands in the courtroom and he defends his client to the ultimate. But the thing about it is, we know that Jesus' words are a whole lot more powerful than what man's are. Those words that he speaks will bring life and they'll restore us. Hallelujah. That's why I was sharing that story about Donald. It's those prayers. And don't you think Jesus wasn't pleading? And we need to remember also, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. There's no trouble. We, so, it's, it's just like the other morning. I woke up at 5 o'clock. Normally, I can go back and lay down and go to sleep. I got this little thought that's running around in my mind. And I can't shake it. And I finally get up. I thought, I'm just, there's no sense laying here. And I thought, I've got to get rid of this, this thought. I can't dwell on this thing. God loves us so much when we'll lay those things down. So I, that's what I did. I, I just laid it down. And, but I'd already been up, I mean, Five o'clock in the morning. I haven't done that since I worked at the power plant. 
And uh, I mean, I, I used to get up at four o'clock every morning, get ready to go to the power plant. And uh, I thought, man, this is early. Of course, Louise is always up at five o'clock. And uh, my, uh, our guard dog is too. And uh, uh, of course, he's always wanting to lay at your feet. He's wanting you to feed him or, do, or pet him or do something with him. And, uh, but the thing about it is, is that we can't allow worries and trouble, not anything, to take place in our lives. We need to depend upon him. Nothing can separate us from his love. He loves us so much that he is willing to meet every need in our life. He hears every prayer. Our prayers don't fall out here on the floor when we speak. That's like I know when we're in the house of prayer and I'm praying. And, and I don't know how many times I've said this. I said, I thank you, God, that our prayers didn't fall to the ground. They are life. They go out and they accomplish all those things you desire to accomplish. You have a purpose, Father God, for us to proclaim and declare these words of faith. And they will come to pass. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. I'll tell you what, when, when you're speaking verses and speaking the Word of God, that Word goes forth. It will not fall to the ground. I, I, was, I was thinking about uh, back when, when I, I talked about uh, breakthroughs, I talked about Joseph and all the things that Joseph went through. And, and the Lord reminded me, he said, go back to Genesis and, and read what, what Joseph said to his brothers. When his brothers discovered, this is Joseph, our brother, the one we threw in the pit. Oh, my Lord, we're going to lose our heads. He's going to kill us. He'll put us in prison. All this, that, and the other. They were terrified. And this is what Joseph said. Joseph said in addressing his brothers, fear not. As you thought evil against me. Even though you had evil thoughts against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are in this day. Now, when you think about that, when, when, when you think about all the things that he went through, now in the midst of that, in the midst of that, he had plenty of opportunity to say, Oh, God, why did this happen to me? Why was I thrown in the pit? Why did this sell me into slavery? Why did that woman chase me? In, and, and why am I in prison again? And then, God, I had an opportunity to get out, and that guy wouldn't even speak to me after I revealed that wonderful dream that he had. He wouldn't even mention it to Pharaoh. And I had to spend another Two years in here. How many of us would have said, God, I don't care where I'm at. I'm trusting in you. I'm believing in you because I know that you love me. Another example is Mary. Yeah, Mary, the mother of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, in that time, if you were pregnant without a husband, don't you think that there wasn't a lot of chatter between people well she says that she's never known a man well it sure looks like to me she's knowing somebody and the thing about it is is that think of all the ridicule she put up with think about when she went to joseph and told him and he said well he said uh, i'm not going to have you stoned or anything like that but i'll I'll just put you away quietly to the side and don't worry about the marriage and all that. She had to have a tremendous amount of faith believing God. God gives us victory in all things. I mean, and this followed her all through her life. Even to the point when he was on the cross, I'm sure, there were still probably people said, oh, yeah, we remember. He was an illegitimate child. Who, who, who is he? He says he's the son of God, but we don't see it. She put up with that, and she loved. 
she loved above all things. She loved God. And she hurt him. You know, I, I was thinking about there, and it's amazing. Like I said, I love this chapter 8. Man, it's just so good. It says in, in the Amplified in Romans 8, it says, We are assured that God being a partner in our labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. I, and when I, was, when I read that word good, it reminded me of what Richard said here the other day. And I've got this wrote down, and it's just so good. And he was given a definition of, of good in a particular scripture. And it says, good is where we are supposed to be is knowing where we are supposed to be and doing what we are supposed to do. So in this scripture, it says, for good to those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. He's got a specific purpose, a specific design for each one of us. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times, I, I, remember, I remember years ago, uh, there was a gentleman that, that uh, went out and ministered, and he had a guy come up to him after the ministry, and, and the guy said, uh, Copeland, Hagen, and Savelle. And what he was saying was, this is what you preached. He evidently wasn't listening to the word. But, yeah, there was some truth in that. Because this gentleman studied a lot of those tapes. He listened to them to grow in the Lord. Not only listened to the Bible, but he used those tapes to encourage himself. And so I know there was things that probably he said that were similar to that. But the thing about it is, is that God used him so many times. I saw so many people get saved out of his ministry. I've seen so many others. I mean, we, uh, Jesus is the way ministries. Uh, I can remember. He's a, that guy was just a rough and tough old guy. I mean, he'd been, he'd been in jail. He'd been a biker. He'd been, he'd just been a little, and he was uneducated, and, he, and while he was in prison, he got saved, and then, and he couldn't read. But he could pick up a Bible and read it. He couldn't read. It's amazing what God will do for each one of us. He's got a specific plan. And we need to make ourselves available to that. I was, uh, I was thinking uh, uh, here in, uh, in uh, chapter 1 of Corinthians, in, in uh, chapter 15 and verse 57. It said, be thanks unto God who gives us victory, making us conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are conquerors, and we need to act like it. Don't go around saying, woe is me, dim and gloom upon me. You, if, if you're saying that, I say you've been listening to too much of the old hee-haw programs where they used to sing that song, doom and gloom and agony upon me, excessive misery, and I mean just went on and on and on. <laughs> that's, like a, that's like I was listening to an advertisement the other day is, uh, telling about this new medicine that uh, to, uh, take care of a certain, a certain type of disease or something. And, and then it was given this list of all the side effects. And then it says, and there are many others that we haven't listed. I'm thinking, good night. Why would you want to? Why would you even want to try to take it in that stuff? I mean, it's kind of like Jeff Foxworthy years ago. He had a, had an ear. Uh, he was talking about he had a ringing in his ears, and that he had got this special medicine. And then he did a five, about a five minute monologue of all the side effects. And it's, and in the middle of it, he says. And uh, you'll see that your mortgage on your house is, re is uh, extended. And, uh, I mean, just on and on. He's got this whole list. And, I mean, and he, and he, I mean he could just, he'd just get on a roll. And I think, good night. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, 
Why would anybody want to take any of this stuff? Why would they when there's such a list? Uh, also over in 1 John, this is in the Amplified also, 5-4. It says, for whatever is born is God. Born of God is victorious. What is born of God is victorious. You are born of God, so you're victorious. You're victorious over all the world, all the worldly things. It says, in, when you read about in Romans, it talks about the peace that we have through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. We have that peace of mind because we're dependent upon Him. We're not depending upon the world. We're depending upon God and His Word. This is the victory. He goes on and says here, this is the victory. He's telling you what the victory is. That conquers the world, even our faith. That victory is what is born of God is victorious. He's proclaiming that. And we just we just need to grab a hold of that word and, and just allow it to have place in us. It says a person who wins out in all the world's ways is simply the one who believes in Jesus. We win. We win. Are we read the end of the book? We win. We're victorious. We're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Son of God in whom we have victory in all things. All things. All things. It says that he healed all the people. He answered all our prayers. He gives those prayers great attention. He sits in heavenly places. He's pleading our case. He, we have to depend upon him. We need to pray that anyone who's not received Jesus, we need to pray for them. Hallelujah. We need to see them set free. I'm going to tell you, they're standing on the brink. There's a fire that's waiting for them. And I'll tell you what, we have, need, we have the message. We have victory. We can proclaim that to those people. We can have, be given opportunity. Now, the thing about it is you need to be wise and all that. I had a gentleman call me the other night, wanted to talk to me, and he said, well, he said, some of the people that, that I know, my relatives are upset because I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I quit. I said, quit doing that. I said, you're turning them off. Quit doing that. I said, are you praying about it? Yes. I said, then why are you trying to make the answer happen? I said, it's up to God to bring your prayers to pass. It's up to God to do those works. I mean, we could have gone out, Louise could have gone out and said, well, our son needs a wife. I'm going to find him a wife. I'll get him a wife. I'll find one. I'll, I'll just go down the street. I'll just see, I'll see if I can find one that looks good to me, and I'll just, I'll just hook him up. That'll be great. No, it's great when God puts it together. It's God when we allow God to bring the answer. God has a certain person in mind for each one of us. Hallelujah. He also has called us to special purposes. And he wants to meet those. And he will if we'll depend upon him. I've got, I've got a relative. I've, I've got a nephew. Uh <sighs> just been in and out of things and really stretched his parents to the limit. And uh, I mean, he hadn't killed anybody or anything. But I mean, he's really stretched them just to a lot of things and they've gone, they've gone the extra mile and the extra mile and then the extra mile and they finally said, we're done doing the extra mile. We love you, but we're not, we're not uh, you are going to have to decide what you're going to do. And uh, so I was, I was talking to his mother the other day, and, and she said he was going to be back in their area again. And she said, uh, she said I, I just don't know wh what he's going to do. And I said, well, I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray with you, and we're going to believe for a job for that young man. We're going to believe for a place for him to live, and we're also going to believe for a change of heart. Because I said, we can't do it. And I said, sis, you can't do it either. We've got to trust God in the midst of this. And she said, well, I hope so. I said, no. I said, hoping's okay. But I said, 
We need to believe that God is going to work in the midst of this and bring his life back into line with the Word of God. All of us need to do that in all our lives, not just just with people, but every situation. You know, we can say, well, I hope that I hope that what you pray will come true. Well, quit that. What does the Word of God say? What are you believing? Are you hoping? I mean, hey, it, it's kind of like the guy said, you know, if wishes were dollars, I'd have a lot of dollars. It's the same way of hope. It's good to have hope, but you need to know what the Word of God says. And when you pray, you need to say, I'm not hoping. I know I have received the answer. I have received. I am victorious in all things. I have. I am a conqueror in all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm so glad you're all here this morning. And I had a long talk with one couple that left. And they were honest and told me they were leaving. Of course, I knew what it was when they saw my name out on the, out on the sign. I just knew that was what was turned them off. No, I, I had uh, had a couple that came to me this morning and said our son and daughter are having a special thing at their church and they've asked us to come and so they're going to go and have a good time. Hallelujah! I just appreciate all of you. Y'all such a blessing, and I, I think the way God is raising up this body. I see people that are stepping up, Father God, have never stepped up before, are stepping up and moving in things and taking responsibility. And we all need to do that. So many churches just sit there, well, leave it up to the pastor. He'll take care of it. I remember years ago, I used to pastor some small churches. And I'd have this lady call me. Well, my brother's in the hospital at Alany. Could you go down and visit him? I asked her, I said, is he saved? No. But I'd like you to go down and visit him. And I said, don't you have a parish a group there that does that? No, uh, that, that's what the pastor does. So i go down and i visit with this guy. and He'd be in the hospital and he'd be taking breathing treatments, have oxygen on. He'd be sitting there and he'd get done with these, his br- uh, breathing treatments and get that all out of the way. And this was back before they put no smoking on uh, so many of the places. Anyway, why uh, he'd get that, and he'd take the oxygen off and uh, put it over to the side. Next thing you know, he'd ha- lighten up a cigarette. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, and uh, he'd say, uh, and his sister would always tell him, now you pray for him, you pray for him that he get better. And I'm thinking, I don't think my prayer is going get, to get a whole lot of work unless we can change his heart. So I I pray, God, I thank you, Lord, that you're changing this man's heart. That was my prayer when I went in. And then I'd ask him to give me grace while I'm in there because I knew this guy was going to light one up. And, I, and anyway, but he was always really nice. He always was glad to see me and all that, but never changed. In fact, he died of it. He died of, of uh, not being able to breathe. And I don't know if he ever accepted the Lord. Don't know where he's at. I pray that he accepted the Lord. I mean, I talked to him enough about it. So, uh, but God, God loves each one of us. Each one of us is called. Each one of us has special purpose. Don't think that you are not unique. Do not think little of yourself. Think what the Word of God says. Renew your mind. I'm going to tell you that's what we're studying. That's what we're studying in adult Sunday class. Renew your mind. Renew your thinking. How do you renew it? I'll tell you what. Romans chapter 8 is a good chapter to read. It'll help you renew your thinking. It'll get you lined out. It'll talk to you about the Holy Spirit. It'll talk to you about a lot of different things in it. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for all your kind attention. Praise God. You are all such a blessing. Let's just pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for each one that's gathered here. Father, if there's one, if there's one in here, I don't think so. But you know each person's heart in here, Father God. If there's one in here that does not know your son, that has not made that confession that Jesus is Lord of their life, I ask you to 
deal with them today. I ask you to minister to them today. I thank you, Father, also that you help each one, Father God, to accomplish those things that you desire for their lives, Father God. I thank you that you give them wisdom and revelation. You give them an understanding of what you want to happen in their lives. And I thank you for each one, Father God, that is responsible and takes time to spend with you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that as we listen to your still, small voice of your Holy Spirit, that our lives will be changed, that we'll be about your business. I thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful people as you've given for this church and this body, Lord. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you want prayer.